Hello, my name is Jane Evans. It was not until I retired from the Mid Valley Secondary Center after teaching for 40 years that I was able to realize a lifelong dream. I flew to South Africa and spent three wonderful weeks visiting South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Botswana on an African safari. There I was able to photograph and see elephants, zebras, elands, wildebeest, and the majestic giraffe. Welcome to Learn at Home on WVIA. Today my lesson is entitled Giraffe Adaptations. I will first show you some very, very interesting facts about the giraffe. I will then summarize how the adaptations that the giraffe has allow it to live within its habitat. Giraffe Adaptations by Jane Evans. The scientific name of the giraffe is Giraffa Camo apollodialis. There are at least nine different subspecies of giraffe, each living in a different part of Africa. Here are the names of those nine subspecies. Genetically, all giraffes belong to the same genus and species. They all live in Africa, but in different parts of Africa. Rain disrupts migration patterns, preventing them from interbreeding. Giraffes do not swim. They cannot walk on spongy, wet soil. Giraffes are classified as even-toned ungulates, which puts them in the same family as pigs, deer, and cows. They have two toes on each foot. All of these animals evolved from a common ancestor that probably lived sometime during the Eocene epoch about 50 million years ago. Giraffes are found in the dry savannas of Africa, shown here in green. Trees must be present in these areas since giraffes typically graze on tree foliage. The Africa savanna is warm year round. Temperatures in the dry season dip to a balmy 70 degrees, while rainy season temperatures can be in the mid 80s. Most of the precipitation occurs during the wet season, which stretches from November to May. Total precipitation is about 100 inches of rain per year. The giraffes have a very distinct appearance. Adult giraffes range from 14 to 19 feet tall, with females approximately two feet shorter than males. The giraffe is the tallest animal on earth. It's taller than three adult humans. A giraffe's height is helpful for keeping a lookout for predators, such as lions and hyenas. Giraffes weigh between 1,750 and 2,800 pounds. And of course, females weigh less than males. The peaceful face of a giraffe is friendly and peaceful. They have big brown eyes with long lashes that protect them from the glare of the sun. Their excellent eyesight allows them to spot predators from very, very far away. The lips of the giraffe are very thick. Tough skin protects the lips, the tongue, and the interior of the mouth from the dangerous thorns of the plants and trees that the giraffe eats. The average length of the giraffe's tongue is 20 inches. The giraffe wraps its tongue around the leaves on a tree so they can grab them and eat them. Their tongues are black in color to prevent them from getting sunburned and apparently they stick them out an awful lot. The extra long tongue of the giraffe also helps them to clean their nose as well as keep bugs off their face. Male giraffes will use their extremely long tongues to taste the pee of female giraffes to determine if they're ovulating. The head of a giraffe is small and quite long with a rounded mouth at the end of it. 
They have little ears on the sides of their osicones. Osicones are hardened bits of cartilage approximately five inches long on the top of the giraffe's head. They are not antlers. They are not horns. The giraffe is born with them. They are covered by skin and anchored firmly to the skull. Osicones of females are thinner and have more hair. While those of males are thicker and have very little or no hair, they're almost knobby. It is unclear as to the purpose of the osicones. They may help males to intimidate one another during the mating season. They may be selectually selected characteristics that, male, that males with more impressive osicones may be more attractive to females. They may help dissipate heat in the blazing African sun. Long and powerful neck of the giraffe measures up to six and a half feet in length. It contains only seven vertebrae, the same number as any other mammal, the same number as humans have in their short neck. But the difference is that each vertebrae has approximately 11 inches tall. The seven individual vertebrae of the giraffe's neck have particular joints that give them flexibility. The head and neck of the giraffe are attached to the body by a set of muscles and ligaments that join the long vertebrae, giving the animal a pronounced hump at the start of the neck. The walk of the giraffe is a pace. Both legs on one side move together. In a gallop, the giraffe pushes off of the hind legs. The front legs come down almost together, but no two hooves touch the ground at the same time. The neck flexes so that balance is maintained. The adult giraffes have legs that are six feet tall. These long legs allow them to sprint as fast as 35 miles per hour for short distances and run at 10 miles per hour over long distances. Giraffes have a powerful kick that they can actually decapitate a lion if it tries to attack. Giraffes have the longest tails of any land mammal, up to eight feet long. They have a dark tassel of hair at the tip of their tail and use it to keep away flies. Brown, dark orange, light brown, beige are the primary colors in the coats of giraffes. The spots are like fingerprints on human. There are no two that are exactly alike. The pattern of spots gets darker with age, but never changes its design. The skin of the giraffe has a characteristic smell that repels insects and parasites. And the dark parts also function as a thermoregulation system. The skin patterns may help camouflage them from predators. Some subspecies have patterns that are shaped like oak leaves. Others have square shaped patterns. Their mane is short and stands upright. It protects the neck from insects. It helps drain water from the neck when it rains heavily, keeping the neck dry and warm. A healthy giraffe can live up to 25 years in the wild. To keep up with its unique anatomy, the giraffe also has some very unusual circulatory system the heart of giraffes is up to 20 feet long and weighs about 24 pounds. It can pump 16 to 20 gallons of blood per minute with enough pressure to get the blood all the way up to the brain. The stomach of the giraffe has four chambers as do all rudiments. They chew their food, they regurgitate it, they chew it again, and then they pass it to the stomach. Giraffes are herbivores eating only plants. They subsist on a variable vegetarian diet that includes leaves, stems, flowers, and nuts. But their favorite food is the thorny acacia tree. Given a choice, males concentrate on leaves from the highest branches. 
Females arch their necks to eat closer to the ground. Thus, a giraffe can be identified as either a male or a female from a long distance away simply by its stance while eating. A giraffe grasps leaves from its lips or tongue and pulls the leaves into its mouth. If the foliage is not thorny, the giraffe combs the leaves from the stem by pulling the stem across the lower canine and incisor teeth. A mature giraffe can consume up to 75 pounds of food per day. Giraffes obtain most of their water from the food they eat, so they do not often have to go to the watering hole. There at the watering hole, they must spread their forelegs apart in order to reach the ground or the water with their head. This is a very, very, very awkward position to be in. Giraffes are very social animals and roam around in groups of approximately 15 members. Such groups have no clear leader or pecking order. Giraffes have a home range that averages 100 square miles. They eat and drink during the early morning and evening. And giraffes only get about 20 minutes of deep sound sleep every 24 hours. However, they do take short naps throughout the day. To see who is stronger, males fight by butting with their long necks and by jostling one another and attempting to land blows with their osicombs. This is known as necking. These fights are not usually dangerous and end when one bull admits defeat and walks away. Once giraffe has reached its adult size, it is extremely unusual for it to be attacked, much less killed by lions or hyenas. Instead, these predators will target juvenile, sick, or aged individuals. An unwary giraffe can easily be ambushed at a water hole since it has to adopt such an ungainly posture when taking a drink. Nile crocodiles have been known to chomp on the necks of full-grown giraffes, drag them into the water, and feast at leisure on their copious carcasses. One of the biggest dangers to giraffes is being hunted. People hunt giraffes for their meat, tails, and coat. In the De Democratic Republic of the Congo, the tail is considered a status symbol. To ask for a woman's hand in marriage, a man must often use a giraffe tail as part of the bride's dowry. Giraffes are classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, because of most primarily habitat loss. This habitat can be lost through deforestation, land use conversion, expansion of agriculture, or human population growth. They are also vulnerable due to civil unrest, illegal hunting, and climate change. Earlier today, you may have watched the program entitled Endangered Species worth saving from extinction. Hopefully you realize that every organism on earth is worth saving. The giraffe's prospects for survival are good for those living in national parks and game reserves. But for animals living outside these areas, the future is less secure. This is Robert, or is it Roberta? It's a pretty good replication of a giraffe, only it does have a few problems. Let's take a look at the many parts of the giraffe. This is the tail of the giraffe. If you recall, the length is eight feet. And at the end of the tail, there's a bit of black, bushy, hairy hair. <laughs> the legs of the giraffe are six feet tall. So if the legs of the giraffe are six feet tall, this tail is way too short. If you read in the literature, it often says that the front legs of the giraffe happen to be longer than the back legs of the giraffe. That is not necessarily so. At the end of each foot, there is a hoof. Giraffes are even-toed underlets. That means they have an even number of toes. They should have two toes on each foot. This giraffe, however, only shows a single hoof. It is incorrect. The hide or coat of the giraffe is covered with um, 
a pattern. It is distinct for that certain giraffe and it does not change with age. Attached to the body of the giraffe is a long neck. This neck contains seven vertebrae, the same number of vertebrae as you have. They are much, much bigger, however. The neck and, neck and head are attached um, by muscles and ligaments that produce a hump. Along the top of the neck, you will see a mane, very short in hair. This one, on this replica, looks more like a horse's mane than it does a giraffe. At the end of the neck, we have a head. The head is not very big. It has small pointed ears. And at the very top of its head, it has two osteocombs. These osteocombs, of course, are there at birth. The osteocombs of the males are different from the females. So let's look at these osteocombs. Do they have tufts of hair at the end or are they knobby? Oh, well, these are knobby, so this must be Robert, not Roberta. The head of the giraffe has two eyes, very, very brown eyes with very thick, thick eyelashes. And at the end of the head, it has very, very, very big, fat, thick lips. And unfortunately in this model, it's impossible to see its long 20 inch tongue. To be successful in its habitat, an organism must be adapted to certain conditions. These conditions are placed into four different categories. First, we have it has to be able to withstand climatic and other ABI factors. Second, the organism must be able to obtain food, water, and nutrients. Third, the organism must be able to escape from its predators and or resist disease. And finally, the organism must find and attract mates. I have described to you many of the different characteristics of giraffes and of our model, Robert. What I'm going to do is take each one of those characteristics that I've talked about and see where they fall. Are they uh, adapting to the climate, to obtain food, to escape predators, or attract meds? The first characteristic I have is its camouflage coat. The camouflage coat is in colors of brown and beige. It blends in with its environment where it lives in the savanna. And because it blends in with its environment, it's a way to hide or escape predators. The second characteristic I have is to talk a little bit about its skin. The skin itself has uh, the ability to produce a smell that repels insects. So if it repels insects as a skin, it of course um, will resist um, predators and disease. It also is very, very thick, so it's very difficult to cut. The skin also, or at least the patterns on the skin, are light and dark. And it is thought that they have some effect on thermoregulation in a, in a way that it helps to protect the organism from the very, very hot African sun. The sun, of course, is an abiotic factor, so the skin or the hide can also be an adaptation to the climate. The next one is the mane. The giraffe has a short, stubby mane. That mane is there because it can protect the neck from insects, so it protects against predators. And also the mane is able to withstand uh, heavy rains, where it directs the water from the neck, keeping the neck warm and dry. So that again is an adaptation to the climate. Situated on the giraffe's head are the osocones. The osocones are not really known for what their purpose is. However, it has been suggested that like the skin and its pattern, uh, the osicones may have something to do with thermoregulation that allows excess heat to dissipate from the organism and therefore adapt to climatic conditions. The osicones also may have something to do with attraction um, of a male, uh, a female for a male or a male for a female. 
They are used in a mating ritual, perhaps, which is called necking, where one organism or one male bats and hits and tries to stab another or male with his osicums. So that ha would have something to do with finding mates. The giraffe has an extremely distinct tongue. First of all, the tongue is black in color. And if the tongue is black in color, it of course can help withstand uh, the direct rays of the sun and it will get sunburned. So the blackness of the tongue happens to be an adaptation to the climate. But that tongue is also used for eating. And it's such a long tongue and it's able to be stuck out and it's able to grab leaves and it wraps itself around leaves and pull those leaves into the giraffe's mouth. So as a long tongue that's able to grasp and hold on to leaves, it's an adaptation to obtain food. And finally, the tongue, also long, but also the tongue, is used to remove um, insects that happen to be swatting and flying around the giraffe's face. And in that case, it would be to resist disease. The giraffe happens to have a biped foot. Biped means it has two toes. Those two toes actually allow it to move very, very quickly on the hard surface that you find in the savanna. It's not good on spongy ground. And to move in a hard surface allows it to escape predators that happen to be chasing it. Keeping in mind the escape from predators, it has very, very, very long legs. These legs allow it to run 35 miles per hour in short distances so that perhaps if a lion is chasing it, it is able to outrun that lion again to escape predators. The giraffe happens to have very long, thick eyelashes. These long, thick eyelashes have been known to filter out the sun rays and to other dust particles that happen to be in the environment. So the long eyelashes are an adaptation to the climate. Keeping in mind eyes, the eyesight of a giraffe is excellent. It can see very, very, very far away, which means it can also escape predators if it sees them coming before they reach him. The giraffe has a long neck, long legs, it's able to reach very, very, very high and get leaves from the top of tall trees. Therefore, it's able to obtain food. The giraffe has a fringed tail. It whips that fringed tail back and forth, back and forth, swatting flies and other insects. Again, a way to resist predators. And finally, the giraffe has an extremely tough lips. Those lips can withstand the very, very sharp horns of the acacia plant when it attains food. So we, here we have a classification of some of the characteristics of the giraffe and how they fall into the four different categories to withstand the climate, to obtain food, to escape predators, or to attract mates. There is no doubt that the giraffe has been able to successfully adapt to its habitat over time. The question, however, remains, will the giraffe continue to adapt to habitat loss, civil unrest, illegal hunting, and climate change that have adverse effects on their environment? I guess only time will tell. Thank you for viewing my lesson and participating in Learn at Home on WVIA.